For most people, collecting autographs is a hobby, but for one man, it became a career. Adam Andrusia has come face to face with some of the most famous people on the planet, from Paul McCartney to Nelson Mandela. And he's sharing his stories in a new book, Two Hitlers and a Maryland. Adam joins us now. Adam, thanks for being with us. Thank you. So the, the title of the book is a little disturbing. Is it two Adolf Hitler autographs that you got? And how did you come up with that title since you've, you've gotten autographs from a lot of people over the years? There was actually just one Hitler autograph in the book, but I wanted to touch on the sort of ways in which autographs, famous people are commodified in autographs. So you can have two Hitlers or you can have five Marilyn Monroes. Um, in the book, there's a kind of backstory, as in my family, there's a backstory of the Holocaust. And my, some of my family were affected by it. And my father is a sort of obsessed uh, collector of postcards of synagogues that were destroyed by the Nazis. And almost to comic effect, pretty much every book in our household when I was growing up had on the spine either Hitler or Nazis or genocide. So I wanted to write a sort of funny book, and it struck me that it could be funny to include Hitler in, in the title. So that's how that got in there. Mm. So um, moving on from Hitler then, tell us about <laughs> uh, maybe some more of the, uh, the lighter stories of the book here. Maybe uh, Paul McCartney. So Paul McCartney, that was after school when I was about 15 years old. I heard that he was going to be recording at a studio in Wembley. So I just headed down to the studio after school. And after a short while, his car pulled up, the window went down, and he gave me his autograph through the window. Uh, that example you just showed there was one that I got through the mail. I, I wrote to him. He was a very tough autograph to get, but I persisted, and in the end, I sent him a Christmas card, and I enclosed a blank card and said it would be really great if you could sign and send this one back to me. Uh, so I used all kinds of guilt tactics, and it worked on that occasion. Mm. So, the, you know, it's, it, you started doing this when you were young, when you, and you, were, you know, when you see kids collecting autographs, it's great, but then sometimes when, you know, adults are out there just talking and, you know, reselling the autographs, do celebrities get annoyed sometimes with you over the years? I think they do, you know, I think they do. Not so much with me, because I sort of quit, the, I quit collecting in person when I was, I was sort of in my late teens. But I remember around that time, that I would see much older people getting autographs. And sometimes they would have a pile of like 10 photographs mm. that they wanted to get signed. And I got Robert Wagner's autograph once, if you remember him from Heart to Heart. Yeah. And I got my one signature and then the guy next to me had 10 photographs, one after the other. Uh, Robert Wagner was very kindly signing them. But I think people do get fed up with it because they know people are obviously selling them. Huh. What's the holy grail of autographs here? One that you are desperate to find one day. You know what, I've, over the years I've started to buy and sell historical autographs. So I've had some incredible things, uh, including Henry VIII. Um, I've never had a Mozart autograph, so that would be kind of an extraordinary thing to have. Mm. So there's a full market for this. Is it verified and traded? And is there some sort of uh, regulatory body that uh, authenticates these? There are regulatory bodies, but, there, but it's also a real minefield because uh, the value that some of these items command means that there are a lot of forgeries around. So if you were going to go out and buy uh, even, a, even a relatively inexpensive autograph, you would want to buy them from you know, a, a well-experienced and respected dealer because it, it is dangerous out there. What about Catherine Hepburn? Tell us that autograph story. So Catherine Hepburn was uh, one of the people that I wrote to. I, I did a lot of corresponding when I was in my early teens. And I wrote to her for her autograph, and I got a letter back from her secretary saying, I'm very sorry, but Miss Hepburn does not sign autographs except for people that she knows. Um, I tried a few more times. Each time I got a letter from the secretary. So then I thought, well, what if I write to her and ask her a question, and I just don't mention autographs? So that's what I did. I wrote to her and said, you know, what do you prefer, stage acting or film acting? And I got this very nice letter back, which I think you've just illustrated there. Nice long letter back from her, which was signed at the bottom. So I immediately wrote back and tried to extend the correspondence. And we exchanged four or five letters. Hers got gradually shorter and shorter until they sort of, the last one said something like, Dear Adam Andrusier, yes, Catherine Hepburn. And then that was the end of the correspondence. So what's your most valuable autograph that you've got, you think? that I've got myself, I think probably the Nelson Mandela one, uh, it was 1990 and he came to London. It was a short time after he was released from, from jail and he came to meet Margaret Thatcher and I tracked him down at his hotel 
and got his autograph. And Winnie was with him. She signed to, um, and even even at that time, it was worth sort of several hundred pounds at the moment that it was signed. And now I would say sort of several times that. Wow. Mm. Well, the book is called Two Hitlers in a Maryland. For more information, you can check out andrusiaautographs.com. Thanks so much for joining us. Thank you. Thank you so much.